the, that the whole thing is com like completely consensual. I don't see how it's not consensual. I don't under I don't under, like like well, I was just like I'm gonna do it anyway. It becomes not consensual when you're on top of her and she's flailing, saying no, quit, quit, stop, please don't do this. I'd been following the case for a while, and I kind of just filed a records request, um, kind of as a fishing expedition, kind of just to see what would come up. So I asked the Columbus Police Department for anything about this guy that had gotten arrested. And they sent me in the mail an envelope of papers like this big. And I, you know, kind of spent a day reading through all of it. And then they also sent me this DVD. And at first I was like a little bit scared to watch the DVD because I was like, all right, what am I getting myself into? But when I watched it the first time, I was just so struck by everything he said is what I've been told to look out for. It shows a real lack of um, education. You can't help but wonder if he had been taught something different in health class, if a friend had taught something, if maybe like a past girlfriend had said something. He didn't think of these ideas on his own. It doesn't make it okay, but he is kind of echoing what he's heard around him. What was your thought when you read some of the comments of people saying, I don't think he raped her. Look, she, she drank and then she sat right down on the bed next to him, so it's not rape. Yeah, I mean, it kind of, I think it supports our point that there are people out there like him who don't get it and who need help. <laughs> it's kind of in their interest. Nobody wants to be sent to nine years in prison. I mean, I could see you know, if, if somebody watching the videos heard themselves say similar things, um, I can see how that could be a real kind of wake-up call. I mean, I've had it happen to me where I've said to a friend of mine, I was at a party, this wasn't, this didn't feel right. And my friend said, well, you were flirting with him. And like, that's, that's never an excuse. You can't be blamed for something bad that somebody does to you. Why did you walk up to me in the mall, ask me if you wanted to hang out, come to my house, hang out? We're sitting on my bed. She sits right beside me right here, man. Mm -hmm. And we yeah, start that's making all the video. stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and she sits right beside me. She right. takes her jacket off and the king lets me kill. We start making out. Things are getting hot and heavy. It sounds like Mr. Gates believed that at some point the survivor gave up her right to consent. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely no place where she gives up consent. So, like, he says that beforehand she had said that she wanted to have sex. But even if there's a prior sort of agreement, um, the saying no overrides that. And then he says they were drunk. No means no, regardless of the circumstance. Um, if she made it clear it wasn't okay with her, that's the end of the line. And then they're just going to go by the, the little video, the video, the little part of the videotape. And there's, there's a lot of video. There's, there, there, there's quite a bit. It's not just the, it's not just little parts, but there's, there's quite a bit of video. Well, I mean, video is like, you know what I mean? They're not going to, they're not going to give a shit well, how, play, how things play on my mind or what the, or what the fuck. I think, man, they're going to fucking throw the book at me, man. It was lucky that it was documented, um, even though that was, I'm sure, such a, harrowing experience to have so many people watch it at the same time I think that allowed for the case to be prosecuted quickly and accurately and there's so many times when it is just a he said she said kind of situation and the survivor needs to really remember that any of those excuses don't add up to invalidating um, what happened to them. While these excuses did not help Gates in his legal defense, they can help us explore what we mean when we talk about rape culture. Listen to what Gates says. When One of the comments to the video was, as soon as I saw the term rape culture, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to watch this video. I turned it off. Yeah, I mean, I think the feminist movement is at a real crossroads, and I think that um, a lot of people are very turned off by feminism because they think of white feminism, they think of the type of feminism that Hillary Clinton puts out um, that's really very much focused only on a privileged minority of women. And I, so I think that a lot of the dislike of this type of terminology stems from that. Um, so, you know, obviously I don't agree with saying as soon as I saw rape culture I turned it off. 
but I can sympathize with feeling frustrated with the movement. Well, to me, the term basically turns all that blame back at a collective understanding of men and women. So if you're someone who has a hard time accepting responsibility, the term rape culture suggests that you have a hand, even if you never have been involved in a situation like that, because you're part of this culture, you have a role to play and a responsibility. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it's absolutely a, a structural societal critique and there's something deeply uncomfortable, especially to politicians, about women kind of having this reproductive power. I think there's just this deeply ingrained discomfort with the idea that a woman can kind of have the last say about what happens to her body. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's not just with the question of consent. It's about the whole process of reproduction. Men are a lot less at the center of that than, let's say, other, like, Congress, <laughs> right? <laughs> or the Freedom Caucus, or the people who had the party in the Rose Garden. And so that's the thing, like, how do you how do we make improvements unless there's some buy-in from men? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. So, so you're saying, like, like, how do we make this happen? Well, they're insecure. It's like a bunny, right? You have to sneak up on a <laughs> bunny in a way that it doesn't run, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. You use the term rape culture in your piece, and, and some people ran. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to approach it so they, they don't run and they, and they actually hear? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, to me, you know, maybe some people get defensive. Um, and to me, it doesn't mean all men are inherently evil. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a broad attack. It's saying, okay, nobody's perfect. Here are some things that you might have learned. Here's why it's important for you to be an ally. You said feminism is at a crossroads. I don't think feminism is at a crossroads. Feminism knows where it needs to go. What's at a crossroads is the notion of white male privilege uh -huh. and the frustration of, holy shit, my rights are limited by the rights of others, women, people of color, and I need to come to terms with that or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that in, in many ways Trump's campaign was, no, you don't have to come to terms with that. We can just assert that power. Mm -hmm. how, how do we sneak up on the bunny and say accountability isn't a bad thing even for you? If you hear a friend say something that sort of reminds you of, of rape culture, it doesn't have to be you're a completely bad person. It's, okay, you've been taught this idea and here's an idea that might be better.